Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen and I want to welcome you back to another edition of Your Adrenal Fix. Today I wanted to talk to you again about going ketogenic. So I had mentioned not too long ago that I had just read a book called The Art and Science of Low Carbohydrate Performance. Um, they have another book, these authors, Jeff Volak and Stephen Finney, called The Art and Science of Low Carbohydrate Living. That is more geared towards those that maybe want to reduce their inflammation, have more energy, uh, repair their adrenals, not be so inflamed, but aren't really geared towards exercise. Whereas this one is more geared towards exercise, where you have those athletes that want to increase their performance, they want to make sure they have enough energy to sustain the activity, they want to be able to recover, they want to be able to have muscle growth or muscle recovery or, or strength or flexibility, and really it's the way to go. But I don't want to talk to you about this book today. I, I do want you to read it and get some information. I wanted to talk to you about the basics of going ketogenic. So there's a big difference between dietary ketosis versus metabolic acidosis. So what does that mean? Well, if you go to your doctor and you say to them, look, I'm thinking of going ketogenic, and they tell you, oh my God, that's horrible for your kidneys, that's the worst thing ever, um, that, that, that's, that you can you know, go into a, a coma, and you could have kidney damage and, and insulin problems. That doctor is basically telling you that they still listen to an eight track tape or they're still listening to a cassette radio and you need to update them and tell them that there's these new things now called mp3 players and satellites and and we listen to music way differently than we did before and what that basically means is that doctor is telling you that they don't know about nutrition and they don't know that there's a big difference between becoming ketogenic in a dietary sense or having metabolic acidosis and so I wanted to write a couple facts down the first fact is when we are ketogenic, we are using our stored fat or the intake of fat that we've recently eaten from our high fat diets um, to fuel our energy. And those are produced through ketone bodies. And ketone bodies are the mobilization of fatty acids for fuel. And we measure those. There's different ways we can measure those and I'll do another video with you. But when we measure someone who's in ketosis, dietary ketosis, they should be between one to three millimoles of, of ketone bodies. However, when you have someone who is metabolically acidosis, they are in the area of 20 millimoles. So it's almost a six-fold difference, number one. Number two, when we have someone who is in dietary ketosis, then their fasting glucose is low. That's because they aren't eating any carbs and they're not fueling your, their energy sources with the sugar that they're not eating. Whereas when you have someone who's in metabolic acidosis, their sugar levels are high because they're type 2 diabetics and they have a lot of excess um, glycogen stores in their body. They're very overweight and they, or their insulin levels are uncontrolled and they run the risk of not only producing ketone bodies but being very high with glucose and insulin. And that's the next level is that there's a difference between insulin levels being very low when you're in dietary ketosis and insulin levels being very high when you're in metabolic acidosis. So that's a probably a good starting point for telling your doctor that there is such a thing as healthy dietary ketosis versus metabolic acidosis, which are two different things. The other thing I like to explain is the ratio. So the ratio should approximately be 70% fat, 20% protein, and 10% carbs. Now that's going to differ from person to person. I may be able to keep ketogenic, meaning use my ketone bodies as my fuel source, at somewhere in the 20 carbohydrate range or somewhere in the 70 grams. But typically if we're first starting with someone to become ketogenic, we want to get them in the less than 50 grams. The other factor is protein. So a lot of people go paleo and, and they reduce their carbs and they reduce their fats. And what happens is so much protein intake is going to cause you to become a glucose burner, something called gluconeogenesis, where you're eating too much protein and what it does in your body is it inherently gets converted into sugar. And so I tell someone with a 2,000 calorie diet, 70% fat would be about 1,400 calories or 155 grams. 
four, 20% protein would be 400 calories and only 100 grams. So think about how many grams of protein you may be eating and it may not take very much before you're above 100 and there's a good chance that that's becoming a glucose end product. And 10% carbs, which is the big deal. So really moderating your protein, um, figuring out um, uh, what healthy fats there are. So things like cheeses or, um, or coconut oils, olive oils, nuts, seeds, higher fatty animal products, which are good, ghee butter, all of these things, nut butters, all of these things could be very, very healthy. So I just wanted to leave you with that concept of becoming ketogenic. I'm going to leave you with um, a couple of, uh, of thoughts in that if a person becomes ketogenic or is in the process of becoming ketogenic and they're starving for sugars or they're just not getting their carb intake, I tell them right away, A, you're probably eating too much protein or B, you're not eating enough fat. You just are not getting enough fat in your diet. And if that's the case, you need to up your fats. You're going to find you're not going to be craving for those sugars. So I hope you enjoyed this edition of uh, your adrenal fix. My name is Dr. Joel Rosen, and I want to make sure that you give me a thumbs up, a share, or a like if you like this video, and be sure to check out my blog on youradrenalfix.com. Thank or sorry, that's my YouTube channel, uh, adrenalfatiguesociety.com is my is my is my um, website. So look forward to helping you in your recovery of your adrenal fatigue nightmare. Thank you so much.